Yes. I received the communication. We are building it now. That was a clip from Zola, which is available now on demand and on Showtime. Congratulations on the movie. You're nominated for seven Independent Spirit Awards, including Best Screenplay. For anyone who doesn't know and hasn't caught it yet, what's the, what's the film about? So the film is based on a Twitter thread. And, and before I go, I, I brought gifts for you guys. <gasps> um, so it's, it's kind of un, uncommon that a play, I put a, a, a mask in this as a bookmark. Um, it's kind of uncommon that a, a, a movie is adapted from a Twitter thread. Mm. Um, usually they're adapted from books or sure. like articles. And so we were like, we looked at it like a book the entire time when we read the Twitter thread because all of America was enthralled by this thing called hashtag the thoughtacy or the story. Yeah. So when Janixa Bravo, the director and I um, got the chance to adapt this, we were like, we're going to turn this into a book, a hardcover book that people can read. So I brought it to you guys right now. Oh, um, full of all the tweets. The Twitter Odyssey? Yes, <laughs> the Twitter <laughs> Odyssey. Um, and it's based, on the, uh, it's based on the story this woman told on Twitter. Yeah, she told it four different Sorry. times because she's that good of a writer. She was getting it better and better each time. And basically, she went on, um, she, she was working at Hooters. A young woman came in and was like, oh my god, you're so beautiful. Do you dance? She was like, yeah, I do dance. And they became instant besties. Mm. And uh, she invited her the very next day, the way instant besties do, on a trip to Florida from Detroit. So they take a 14-hour drive from Detroit to Florida. And once they get there, uh, they end up in hell or as it's more commonly known, Florida. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and, um, insanity ensues. And yes. that scene was actually the first scene I ever wrote for the movie. Um, that was a scene where they're driving to Florida and she realizes she might be in over her head. I mean, the, the, the film is brilliant. I feel like everybody should watch it. Uh, because it's got that element of you sometimes, or on some level, you feel like your life's going to change and you're going to get discovered and you end out that it's awful and not discovery is the wrong word, but you, it's, it's terrible, it's awful. How did the project come to you and land on your lap? I mean, it came to me in that way that I think the story came to Zola or Asia as she's actually known, um, because I became instant best friends with Janixa Bravo at a party. We right. went to a weird party in the hills. I was on a horrible date, and I was <laughs> running away from my date. Um, and I heard kind laughter and immediately ran to it. And we became besties. And uh, over the year that we were friends, we both she, this project came to her. And um, she was like, Jeremy, it's so weird. I'm up to write the movie Zola. And I was like, shut the up. Like this, I bleep myself. I was like, this <laughs> is well. <laughs> I, is it late night? Can I say? I don't know. <laughs> but I was like, this is. I was like, this is the number one thing I've always wanted to work on. And she's like, this is. I just, I've always wanted to work on it too. And we need to do this together. And I was like, yeah, I know we need to do this together. But unfortunately, I'm in grad school. And she's like, I know. If only you weren't in grad school. And her husband at the time, Brett Gelman, was like, what does being in grad school have to do with anything? Yeah. Don't you have a spring break or something? Yeah. <laughs> so over summer break of my first year of grad school, she and I wrote this entire screenplay together. Oh wow. So great. I mean, Christy, you've been working since you were so young. How did you get discovered? What got you started in this? I was seven, and I was in a school play, and I was the lead, because I had accused the former lead of punching me. Well, I had provoked him into punching me and then told on him. <laughs> right. So then I got the lead. And um, yeah, I was the lead. And I didn't, you know, I was seven, so I didn't want to pee beforehand. So I did the whole play jiggling, you know, like little kids. Yeah. Knees together mm. type of thing. And apparently, that was adorable. and. Then I was approached to be a child actress. So hang on, there was just what, like there was just an agent. Uh, no, there, another mother there had her child doing commercials. Right. And, stuff. Yeah. and then it was like this. It's like, oh, your kid's adorable. She should do it too. Wow. Well, she's right. I mean, being, seven. Being you're a up, like work sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, your acting career is flourishing now. Anybody who's seen the, the second season of Emily in Paris uh, would have seen you. What was it like filming there? Do you remember your first? True, because I know you go to France quite a lot. Do you yeah. remember your first trip to Paris? Yes, I do. It's um, it's actually I'm writing about it right now, um, because it's it's bringing up a lot of trauma and um f and fun for me. But um, the thing I remember most uh, clearly is that I was 15 years old. I won a, a, an award from the Virginia Governor School to go to France, and my grandmother was like, "You can't go there." And I was like, why not? And she was like, they're all winos in France. They drink <laughs> wine like it's water. Don't drink the water because it'll probably be wine. And, um, and wow. she wasn't wrong. No. Um, I did drink wine of, for the first time when I was there. Yeah. 
Um, but it was, it, I mean, France is a very important place for me. I'm a huge Francophile. I love so many, so much French cinema. I love so many, like, I don't know, I love so many French bands, weirdly. And being on that set, learning from Lily and Ashley and Darren Starr, who's a genius, was the most fun. And I can't wait to get back for season three. Oh, oh, exclusive. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Reggie, do you have a question for any of our guests this evening? Yes, I do. Tonight's question goes to. Uh, both of our guests uh, this evening. As we all know, giraffes are relatively tall animals. Uh, uh, do you believe that if a giraffe could become taller, uh, that it would change the trajectory of, of, of our path as human beings? No. I've thought about this a lot because uh, <laughs> when we were... I'm, I'm, I'm six foot five, my grandmother's six foot three, my uncle's six foot ten, and Nick Braun, who's in Zola, is six foot seven. Mm. I'm and five two. Five two. And as someone who's lived a life as a giraffe of a human, I do think that my life would be incredibly more difficult if I got taller. So I think that that would be what would happen to, the, to all of humanity. Our, all of our lives would be more difficult if giraffes got taller. That is uh, Janixa. It's yeah. Janixa, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Please thank our incredible guests, Christina Ricci, Jeremy O'Hara. Stick around. We've got a performance from everybody talking about Jamie when we come, come back. Come on, girls. Thank you so much. Come on, boys. Come on, tweeners. Let's do this.